Base launch trajectory and countdown net. Pad is clear. N. Nine, eight, Launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Vehicle is supersonic. Stage separation confirmed. Dragon separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. You are looking at a live view of Falcon 9, awaiting liftoff at 1.31 p.m. Eastern Time from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Thank you all for tuning in to the GSAT N2 mission. My name is Atticus Federa, and I'm a propulsion engineer here at SpaceX. Today we will be delivering the GSAT N2 satellite to a geosynchronous transfer orbit on behalf of the New Space India Limited, or NSIL, which is the commercial arm of the Indian Space Research Organization, otherwise known as ISRO. The GSAT N2 mission is NSIL's second demand-driven communication satellite that is the highest capacity unit ever built by ISRO. The capacity GSAT N2 is bringing online will play a key role in bridging digital divides in India, particularly in uncontacted regions, unconnected regions rather, including the Andaman and Nicobar, as well as Lakshadweep Islands. And this will be the 19th flight for today's booster, which previously supported Bandwagon 1, which was a mission as part of SpaceX's SmallSat rideshare program, as well as NASA's CRS-27 mission, Amazona 6, iSpace M1, SES-22, as well as 13 Starlink missions. At just about T-minus 10 minutes, we are looking good for an on-time liftoff. The vehicle is healthy, and the range is ready to support. Now, we do have a little bit of cloud cover today, but teams are reporting we only have a 5% probability of weather violation. So while we wait, let's meet the vehicle that will be taking GSAT N2 to orbit today. The two-stage Falcon 9 vehicle you see on your screen stands just about 229 feet tall. When it's fully fueled, it'll hold just over 1 million pounds of propellant. And we began loading those propellants on both stages of the vehicle at T-35 minutes. Starting from the top of the rocket, GSAT N2 is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is the nose of the rocket. This fairing is made of a carbon composite material. The fairing protects the satellite on its way to orbit. And of course, the fairing is made up of two halves, which are jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. And one of these fairing halves supporting today's mission is flight proven, flying for its fifth time, and the other half is flying for its first time today. Both sides of the fairing will be recovered after today's flight by our fairing recovery ship, Bob. Now, below that payload fairing, we do have the second stage, which is the part of the rocket which will take our payload to its destination orbit. The second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum, or MVAC engine, at about two and a half minutes into flight. And then we do relight that engine a second time before we de deploy the GSAT N2 satellite. Below the second stage, you can see the black interstage, which is part of the first stage booster. And at the bottom of that first stage, there are nine Merlin M1D engines, and these will get Falcon 9 off the ground and up to the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Shortly after liftoff, the first and second stages will separate from one another, and then the second stage will continue to orbit, while the first stage will start making its way back down to Earth. The first stage is designed to be reflown with minimal refurbishment between flights. Today's booster is flying for the 19th time, and we will be attempting to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, which you can see there on your screen, currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. If we are successful in recovering the booster today, it will mark the 371st successful recovery of an orbital class rocket. And lastly, that large truss structure that you see next to the rocket is the transporter erector, or TE. We use this to both roll the rocket out to the pad as well as to raise it to its vertical launch position. In callouts over the nets, you might hear the TE referred to as the strongback from the launch team. 
And this TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and to the satellite, all the way up until the moment Falcon 9 transitions to internal power. And now that you're a little more familiar with the vehicle, let's learn more about today's payload, GSAT N2. We are at just about T minus five minutes from liftoff of Falcon 9 from Space Launch Complex 40 at Tanks are Cape. pressurizing for Stromberg retract. We just heard the tanks are now pressing up in preparation for retracting the Strongback. And at liftoff, the transporter erector or TE, or otherwise known as the Strongback, will retract in order to clear the way for Falcon 9's ascent. And to prepare for that retraction, we will see the clamp arms open around the base of the second stage. Strongback retract has started. There, we just heard that call out. You should see those clamp arms just below the fairing starting to open up any second now. There you go. You can see those clamp arms opening. And this will allow the Strongback to retract away from the vehicle. And this is to clear the way for ascent. Should be seeing that strong back start to recline in just a couple seconds here. There you can see the strong back is starting to lean away just slightly from the vehicle. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. The first stage and the second stage should finish loading propellant just about a minute apart from each other, with the first stage wrapping up at T minus 3 minutes, and the second stage will wrap up at around T minus 2 minutes. And those white clouds you see around the vehicle are formed as the chilled gas above the LOX tank liquid surface vents overboard to maintain pressure in the tanks as needed. When this gas comes into contact with the warmer Florida air, it does condense the water stage in that one, air. LOX load is complete. And as we just heard, we finished LOX loading on stage one. And as I was saying, when that cold gas contacts the warmer Florida air, it will condense and form those clouds that you see there on your screen. Uh, coming up next at T minus two minutes, we should hear that LOX loading has completed on the second stage. 
Following that, at T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. And startup means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. And following that, just inside of T minus 2 seconds, we will light those nine Merlin 1D engines for liftoff. So far, the payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket at this time. Stage two, locks load is complete. And there, we just heard that call out. Stage two, locks loading is complete, which will wrap up propellant loading on the vehicle. And that began at around T minus 35 minutes. So again, coming up next at T minus one minute will be the startup phase. So let's listen in as we hear a series of call outs that lead up to launch. Ground gas closeouts. So that first call out you just heard was for ground gas closeout. You can see a little bit of the remaining propellant in the TE lines is now being vented. And you can see that cloud forming as we clear those lines out. Falcon 9 is in startup. And great news there. Falcon 9 has just entered startup, so the onboard flight computers have now taken control of the launch countdown. Go for launch. And there we just heard our go, from launch, go for launch from our launch director. So let's listen in as we lift off Falcon 9. T-minus 30 seconds. T-minus 15, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, and lift off. Go Falcon, go GZ-20. Vehicles pitching downrange. Stage one, chamber pressure nominal. T plus 30 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station carrying the GSAT N2 satellite. Now, during ascent here, we will tilt. Power and telemetry are nominal. We will tilt or gimbal the engines, and this will turn the rocket horizontally in a maneuver known as a gravity turn. Now we're still going up, as you can see in that telemetry in the bottom left side of your screen. Falcon 9 is supersonic. But we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad, now at supersonic speeds. We should be throttling the engines down soon in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. There we go, we just heard that call out. This is a critical moment during flight because the combined stresses caused by Falcon 9 accelerating through the atmosphere and the ambient static pressure are at their greatest. Now the rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and to get into orbit. You can track our progress to orbit by keeping an eye on that stage one telemetry in the, in the bottom left side of your screen. We just heard we're starting the ascent chill on the MVAC engine, and we are coming up on a series of events. Those are main engine cutoff, or MECO, followed by stage separation, second engine start one, or SES one, and then following that is fairing separation. During MECO, we do shut down those nine M1D engines, and then following that, we separate the first stage and the second stage. Once separated from the second stage, the booster will flip its orientation and begin heading back to Earth. And simultaneously, the second stage MVAC engine will ignite. Following that quickly will be a fairing separation. So we should be coming up on Miko in just a few seconds here. Main engine cutoff. 
age separation confirmed. And that ignition. And there we go. We just saw that series of events, starting with main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation, and then following that was second engine start one. As you can see there on your screen, the MVAC engine is now lit in space and heading towards orbit. Coming up shortly, you should hear a call out for fairing separation. Getting some great views of both stages in flight right now. You can see the first stage on the left side of your screen, now in a coast phase, and the second stage on the right side of your screen, burning towards orbit. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we go. Great news. Just saw those two fairing halves separate. Our payload GSAT N2 is now exposed to the vacuum of space, heading towards its intended orbit. Now we're just at about T plus three minutes and 45 seconds into today's mission. At T plus six and a half minutes, we expect to have some great views of the first stage entry burn. Now for this entry burn, we do light three of the M1D engines on the first stage, and that'll start with the center E9 engine, followed shortly by E1 and E5 engines. And this slows the, vehicles down, the vehicle down as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to do this in order to reduce re-entry forces, and this ultimately helps us recover and reuse the second stage, or the first stage, rather. During this entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we are still moving very fast, and this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also sometimes called the rocket's plume, and this will deposit a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface, and that's why our flight-proven vehicles look so toasty. And of course, that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses. And we are coming up on that entry burn in just about a minute now. You might notice in the first stage telemetry on the bottom left side of your screen, our altitude is now decreasing while our speed is increasing. Gravity has taken over and the vehicle is Both now- Both vehicles are on nominal trajectories. The first stage is now heading back down towards Earth on a nominal trajectory as we just heard on the nets. And of course the second stage continuing to accelerate towards its intended orbit, now going over 13,000 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 160 kilometers. Getting some really incredible views from space here on both stages. And again, coming up on that entry burn in just around 20 seconds on the first stage, you can see the vehicle is now positioned to relight those engines and re-enter the atmosphere. You can see our grid fins are deployed, and these fins will help guide the vehicle back down to its landing location. Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one FTS has saved. There we just heard the call out for the entry burn, and as you can see, those engines are now burning on the first stage and rapidly slowing us down. And this burn should last just around 20 seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. And there's that call out for the end of the entry burn. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, and this enables more investment in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission just performed that entry burn for its 19th time. The Merlin engines on the first stage are optimized for sea level. These engines achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. And the MVAC engine on the second stage is optimized to operate in the vacuum of space, producing just about 220,000 pounds of thrust. Stage 2 is in terminal guidance. Now we just heard stage 2 is in terminal guidance, which means coming up next we will be shutting the MVAC engine down on the second stage. 
Following that very shortly should be our landing burn on the first stage. Stage one transonic. Now we just heard the stage one is now traveling below the speed of sound. You can see we are approaching some cloud cover on the left side of your screen. Stage two FTS is saved. And again, as a reminder, we are targeting a landing on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, which is currently in the Atlantic Ocean. Stage one landing burn. There we go. We just, heard, shut down. we just heard the landing burn has started on the first stage, and the second engine has now shut down. You can see the drone ship just below the first stage there as we come in for a landing. Nominal orbital insertion. Stage one landing landing deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it. That landing marks SpaceX's 371st recovery of an orbital class rocket, which includes first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. We did also hear we had a nominal orbit insertion on the second stage. So our second stage is now embarking on its coast phase. And after this coast phase, we will light that MVAC engine for a second time around the T plus 28 minute mark. And that will be followed by payload deploy around the T plus 34 minute mark. Our customer for today's mission is New Space India Limited. This is Brian Malin on Countdown 1. I wanted to say a special word for Michael Taylor, as this will be his final mission. He has been at the forefront of spaceflight for the United States for several decades. We would not be where we are today in the United States space program history without him, and we would not be where we are today at SpaceX without Mike Taylor. So. From all of us at SpaceX, Mike, we salute you, we thank you, and we look forward to your future journeys. Great words there from our LD, and congrats on an amazing career, Mike Taylor. Now, the second stage is now embarking on its coast phase. And again, as I said, we will be lighting that engine for a second time around the T plus 28 minute mark, and following that is payload deploy at the T plus 34 minute mark. And before we take a short break for that coast phase, we do have a couple of messages from our customer, the Indian Space Research Organization. And after that, we'll see you back here in just about 15 minutes. GSAT N2 is a next generation communication satellite owned by NSIL, weighing 4,700 kilogram, built by ISRO for meeting the high throughput communication requirements. It's primarily operating in K band. Uh, providing almost 48 gigabytes per second throughput. Uh, this spacecraft is, after the launch, is going to be positioned at 68 degree east longitude, uh, providing broadband services and in-flight connectivity, primarily on the Indian region. There are going to be uh, about 32 sport beams uh, covering India mainland island islands of this region. And primarily, this is designed to also to enhance the capacity by providing eight narrow sport beams over the northeastern region of India, which requires the support for uh, essential communication requirements. Uh, the whole spacecraft is designed using the ISRO's uh, well-proven I-6K bus with a 6.2 kilowatt power generation operating in 70 volts uh, bus voltage. And uh, the propulsion system is a bipropellant system for orbitizing and its station keeping. And uh, we are expecting that its uh, precise launching will have a, an orbital life of almost 14 years. While building the spacecraft, we used the support of Indian industries who built us with a lot of subsystems, including structures and hardware meant for the satellites and also the payloads. And uh, ISRO centers contributed in uh, various ways to build the satellite finally. Uh, I'm Really happy that this satellite is now ready for launch and uh, uh, will reach its destined orbit. 
meantime uh, in the ground to asuna satellites in the required spot we are ready with the ground infrastructure to provide the network of communication uh, very very fast asuna it is made declared operational hoping to see the launch uh, go really fine and all the very best to the team
Welcome back to the GSAT N2 mission. We've had a great mission so far. Falcon 9 lifted off at 1.31 p.m. Eastern Time from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. We did have a successful ascent, fairing separation, and second stage orbit insertion. Those fairing halves are being recovered by our recovery ship, Bob, and this was the fifth flight for one fairing half as well as the first flight for the other. We also did recover the first stage on our drone ship, and that marks its 19th landing. Now we're just moments away from a second ignition of the MVAC engine on the second stage, and this will carry the GSAT N2 payload into the orbit needed to deploy the satellite. This burn will be followed by shutdown of the MVAC, also known as second engine cutoff or SECO2. So let's wait for those callouts. Should be starting that engine in just around 40 seconds. As you can see in that telemetry, we now are at about 240 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. We are now in what's called a parking orbit, and the second burn will take us to our geostationary transfer orbit, which is the deploy orbit for the GSAT N2 payload. And that ignition. As you can see there on your screen, we did just light the MVAC engine. We are now accelerating into our geostationary transfer orbit. This burn should last just around a minute in total. As you can see in the telemetry, the second stage is now rapidly accelerating the payload, traveling well over 30,000 kilometers per hour at an altitude of 250 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Getting some great views of the MVAC nozzle glowing that bright orange as it radiates heat away into the vacuum of space. And back shut down. And with that second engine cut off, nominal orbital insertion. And a nominal orbit insertion, as we just heard. We are now just a few minutes away from payload deploy. Uh, we will take one more short break for the final few minutes of coast, and we'll see you back here in just about four minutes.
And welcome back again to the GSAT N2 mission. We've had a great mission so far, and we are now just two minutes away from our expected payload deploy. Our customer for today's mission is New Space India Limited, which is the commercial arm of the Indian Space Research Organization, otherwise known as ISRO, which is a government of India company under the Department of Space. GSAT N2 is a communication satellite set to enhance broadband services in-flight and maritime connectivity across the Pan-India region, as well as provide cellular backhaul operations. The satellite has been specifically designed to meet the demanding service needs of remote unconnected regions, including the Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshadweep Islands. GSAT N2 has a mission life of 14 years, and the entire capacity is spread across 25 wide spot beams and eight narrow spot beams, with higher throughput concentrated in northeastern regions. NSIL will be ready to commence commercial services to its customers immediately after completion of in-orbit testing and commissioning of the satellite at its designated orbital slot at 68 degrees east. Getting a great view of the payload there on your screen. We are approaching payload deploy in just around 20 seconds. GSAT N2, payload deploy confirmed. And there goes GSAT N2. You just heard that call out, and you can see the satellite moving away from the second stage on your screen right now. That will wrap up our coverage for today. Thank you for joining us for SpaceX's 114th successful launch of 2024. All of us here at SpaceX want to give a big thank you to our customer, New Space India Limited, for entrusting us with today's mission. We also want to give a shout out to the Eastern Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's launch. And as always, of course, thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in and for your continued support. Remember to follow SpaceX on X for launch updates. Thank you all, and we'll see you again soon.